Today we're going to talk about unconditioned dharmas. It is the state of nirvana that we would like to reach. How do we find this unconditioned state? It's actually within all the conditioned dharma, which are all the rising and ceasing of all the phenomena due to cause and effect. So we want to live in this world of conditioned existence while seeing the unconditional. That is called being in the world while transcending the world to be able to reach the state of enlightenment. That's our goal. Today we're going to look at the 100 Dharma Shastra by Vasubandhu Bodhisattva that talks about these six states of unconditioned dharmas. Number one is unconditioned empty space. We use empty space as the overview of this unconditioned state. Our mind should be like the empty sky that is free from any changes, that doesn't have rising or ceasing, so it's not the dharma of form, the body, and it's not the dharma of the mind. It's away from the body and the mind, it's not changing, and it's permanent, and free without any delusional discrimination. It should be empty of the self, empty of others, empty of living beings, empty of lifespan. According to the Diamond Sutra, we use the sky to describe the state of emptiness. Once Master Xu Yin offered the assembly tea and peanuts on New Year's Eve. After the assembly has tasted the peanuts, he asked, does the peanuts taste anything to you? And then he said, if the peanuts have flavor to you, that's the delusional discrimination of ordinary beings. If it doesn't taste anything to you, then you're no different than a rock or wood. This is the non-dual negation in Buddhism. If you think the peanut tastes good, that is living in the world of conditioned dharma. If the peanut doesn't taste like anything to you, you're attached to the unconditioned dharma. So you don't want to be attached to the condition or the unconditioned because either way would be attachment. The key is to sever all our dualism and our attachment to the idea of right or wrong, good or evil, beauty and ugliness. We want to sever all attachment to dualism and to the idea of the self. Number two, unconditioned extinction attained by selection. This is reaching nirvana and here it's called extinction by selection, which means choosing or wisdom. So we want to reach nirvana through prajna. There are two kinds of obstacles that we have to overcome to reach the state of nirvana. One is the obstacle of affliction, two is the obstacle of the known. These two things block us from reaching enlightenment. So it's actually our obstacles. This obstacle of affliction is because of our attachment to self. Because we have the idea of the self, thinking this body is me, everything is mine, that's why we have affliction of greed, anger, and ignorance. So we need to overcome this obstacle to reach this extinction or unconditioned state. The obstacle of known is because of our attachment to dharmas which is all phenomenon. We think all the phenomena are real. That's why we are stuck in this world of condition arising. Let go of our attachment to the self and let go of our attachment to the dharma. We call it emptiness of self and emptiness of dharmas. That's how we reach the state of extinction. So this is through Prajna, we call it selection here. Number three is unconditioned extinction that is unselected. So opposite of number two, this is due to prajna, we reach the state of unconditioned extinction. Number three is unselected due to our concentration, our deep meditation, not because of our choosing, our wisdom. There are two kinds of unconditioned extinction that is unselected. One is the absence of conditioning factors that is due to 
are deep concentration. When we have deep samadhi, we can reach this level of stillness that is like nirvana. Two is fundamental purification of the self nature. We innately are supposed to be in nirvana. That is aligned with our own nature. We are supposed to be in the state of unconditioned nirvana. Four is unconditioned, unmoving extinction. This is just like the absence of conditional factors. In deep concentration, we are absent of any condition factors. Our mind is not moving and is still. There is no more condition factors that make us be in the conditioned state. There are three kinds of worlds. The world of desire. Number two is the world of form. And number three is the formless world. We are right now in the world of desire because we are full of greed and lust. There are actually heavenly beings that are in the world of form, which means they don't have the intense desire like us. They are always in deep meditation and they still have a physical body. And number three, the formless world, the heavenly being with deeper meditation, they do not have body and form anymore. Unconditioned, unmoving extinction is talking about the heavenly beings in the world of form, which are in jhanas of deep concentration. First level jhana, second level jhana, third level and the fourth jhana. This is actually talking about fourth jhana, very deep concentration, but this can be ordinary being, just like a heavenly being with deep concentration without intense greed or lust, but they are not really enlightened. They still have the idea of the self and they still have afflictions. Number five is unconditioned extinction of feelings and thinking. This is actually the heavenly beings in the formless world. They don't have the physical body anymore. It's just the mind, but it's free from feeling and thinking, such as the arhats. They really don't have an idea of the self anymore. Their sixth consciousness actually stops. They no longer have the feelings and the thinking like all of us. The feeling of pleasure and pain do not even register for them. They don't have to have patience to endure the pain because they don't even feel the pain. That's the saints that reach this level of nirvana. Six is unconditioned true suchness. This is our goal, to be back to our true suchness, free from the self and empty of all dharmas. This is our true state. All our cultivation are to reach this level. Get rid of attachment to the self and attachment to all dharmas. In the consciousness school of Buddhism, we talk about three natures. One, the fully conceptualized nature. Two, other dependent nature. Three, the fully accomplished nature. A mix of all the other dependent nature, which means all the phenomena, all the condition arising, our life that we're experiencing due to the wholesome and unwholesome karmic seeds in our Laya consciousness. That's why everything manifests in our world right now. If we do not give rise to false thinking and delusional discrimination, which is the fully conceptualized nature, then we will reach the fully accomplished nature, which is our true suchness. Do not give in to our fully conceptualized nature, which is our delusional discrimination due to our ego that we think this way. A saint do not give rise to the delusional discrimination. They basically stay in the state of nirvana and do not give rise to those thinking of dualism. The master Kumara Java, he translated a lot of sutras such as Amitabha Sutra. When he was only seven years old, he went to the temple with his mom. He went into the main hall. He saw the big bull bell, which is the musical instrument that we use for all the Buddhist ceremonies. This instrument is very heavy, very big. It's made out of bronze in the shape of a bowl. So he picked it up and started playing with it. After he played for a while, then he thought to himself, 
Wait a minute, I'm only seven? How can I hold up this bull bell? That's impossible. Just that one thought, he couldn't hold it anymore. He dropped it on the floor and it made a big noise. That's when he became enlightened. What did he realize? He realized everything is just a mind. Just one thought, thinking he's incapable of holding this bowl bell, he couldn't hold it anymore. Everything is just consciousness only. When he gave rise right to the thought, that is the fully conceptualized nature. The big bowl bell is the other dependent nature. If he does not give rise right to conceptualized nature, and it's already the fully accomplished nature. So all we have to do in all the conditioned nature, dharma, we do not give rise to our delusional discrimination. Then it's already the fully enlightened state, the nirvana that we're reaching for. So where do you find this unconditioned state? It's within all the conditioned state right now. We call it being in the world while transcending the world. Everything is okay, everything is perfect, then life is perfect. So that's the class for today. Thank you for listening. Amitabha.